Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. This week we're doing something different, something a little bit more organic, artistic-y driven thing. Yeah, so this is uh, what we're going to build today. This is a sort of a lampshade, a new project I'm going to try to do. And um, I got inspired by um, all the Veronoi type designers out there, uh, such as uh, Nervous System, Jesse and Jessica, who run Nervous System. They do some amazing work. If you haven't checked them out, go ahead and follow them on, on social medias. Check out their website, doing some awesome stuff. I also got inspired by Alex Hatchman, my buddy, who put together this uh, Pac-Man Ghost Vernoy edition, which is this really cool little Pac-Man with like Vernoy stuff in it. And it got me thinking about um, how I can sort of try to do something similar uh, using uh, different tools. So to put this together, I actually used Fusion 360 and Mesh Mixer. So uh, this is just a little bit of an experiment to, uh, to try to figure out a workflow on how to make something uh, uh, to, those, the, to that type of uh, design style. So let's check it out first. We're going to start off with uh, making this shape in Fusion uh, 360. And it's a parametric design. We can modify it and stuff. Um, but let's go ahead and make a new one. So I'm going to click on File New. And we'll start here. So the first thing you want to do is figure out what am I making it for, obviously. In this case, I am actually want to make it for this NeoPixel ring, the 24X NeoPixel ring. And um, to drive it, I'm thinking about either using a Huzzah board or a, uh, a 32U4 Bluefruit uh, feather board so that I can control it with my iPhone or, or Android phone and sort of change the colors and things like that. So I think it'd be kind of an interesting artistic -y type project, glowy, of course. So um, if we look down here, you'll see that the diameter is 66 millimeters on the outer diameter, 52 on the inner diameter. So um, instead of designing the component first, I'm actually just going to reference this um, just to make sure that the, the actual shade can go over that. So I don't want to make it anything under that. So let's just keep that in mind. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the front so that I'm, I'm facing the front. And we're going to actually, um, instead of making like circles, like a series of circles and then like building from there, we're actually going to do a revolve uh, a revolve, um, revolve. <laughs> and what that is, it's basically, it's going to, it takes a, uh, a profile of a sketch and then it revolves around it and you pick an axis and it revolves around that axis and around that profile. So the first thing I'm going to do is and click on the line thing, the line tool, and I'm going to click on this grid here. And I'm going to start by, uh, start by drawing out a line here and here. So I'll click here in the center and draw out, uh, how, how big I want it. So we said, um, 66. Since this is uh, a profile of the half of the lampshade, it's going to be half of 66, which is 33. But you could also do some math here and type in like 66 divided by um, 2, and it'll do that too. I'm just going to type in 33 to simplify it. And it's not working with me right now. So I'm just going to click on that and then just change it here, 33. There you go. I, it made me a, a little um, constraint. I'm just going to delete that because I don't need it. And I can just drag this around. The next thing I'm going to do is how tall do we want it? Well, we want it to be, I don't know, something like 70 millimeters I think will work. So I'm going to type in 70. Like that. And hit tab. Enter. So now it's 70. And I'll, I'll drag this out here. So we can change these if we ever want to change uh, it later. But that's pretty much what we want. So we got our two main sketches here, the bottom. The, the radius type and then the tallness of it. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use the spline tool. And the spline tool lets you create some really nice curves um, using sketches, the sketch tool. So I'm gonna click on this guy here. And when you, when you see it first, it looks like, okay, there's no curve here yet. We have to click first. And then as soon as you start moving around, then you get that curve. So I'll click over here and then something like over there. And then you have to, you wanna clear this out um, or you wanna accept this, you gotta click on the checkbox. Don't click escape, because if you click escape, it actually clear out the whole everything you just drew so click okay and then we got these cool little bezian curves they're the green stuff so i'm gonna click on uh, the escape key to get out of the tool and now i am in the sort of manipulator tool so i can actually drag these out and start making a cool shape here uh this is up to you how however you want to make it uh, you just click on a point and then you can modify the green stuff by just clicking and dragging it so i think that looks kind of cool i'll hit stop sketch and now we have our our, our half profile that we can revolve around. And that's what revolve is gonna do. So I'll go to create, and then I'll click on revolve. And then it's gonna say, well, what's your profile? This is the profile that we just made. And then what's your axis? And it's gonna be this guy here. This is what we're gonna revolve it around. So I'll click on that. And then you can see pretty much what it's doing. So if you start manipulating this guy, you can see it's revolving around this profile on that axis in the middle there. 
So I'll, I'll, I'll just highlight this part and then put 360. Let's just to show you. Then I'll hit OK. And that basically makes a body now. So there's our body, and then we have our sketch here. The cool thing about this, though, is that we can modify it. If we don't like the shape of it, we can just click and drag and modify it this way. So I want to bring this out maybe a little bit. Maybe bring this in more. So we can, you can keep playing around with it until you get a shape that you want. And you can, you can always go back into the sketch and modify it even more. So do something like that. Maybe a little bit over here. I'll hit OK just to get rid of that sort of top thing. So if you look at the bottom here, it's nice and flat. So that's really good for printing flat on the bed of the printer. And then I kind of want to do a cut here. I want to cut this out and make it really flat. So to do that, I'm actually going to make a construction plane. So I'll click on offset plane. And then it's like, well, what plane do you want? I want the bottom here to reference this. So I'm going to click on that and it creates a plane for me. And then I can offset it by dragging up or down. In this case, it's going to be um, a little bit up over here. So I'm going to cut it like around there. 66 looks OK. I'll hit OK. Now to actually cut it, I'm going to use the modify split function. So it's under modify. There's something called split body. So I'll click on that. It's going to tell me, well, what body do you want? I want this one. And then what splitting tool would you like? And I'll click on this, this guy here. You get a little red preview of what you're going to cut, what the cut is doing. So that's good. I'll hit OK. And then now we can, um, so if you look here in the, in the browser, you're going to see construction. That's where our plane is. So I'm going to hide that because we don't need it anymore. And then now you have two bodies. So I'm actually going to delete this body here by clicking, right clicking on it and clicking remove. And now we have our flat top and our bottom, flat bottom. So the next thing I want to do is I actually want to shell this out so that it's a shell. And to do that, I'll just click on the shell button up here under modify. Click on that guy. And then I'll click on this guy too because we actually want to create a shell throughout the whole thing. So then we can either use the, the arrow to, to, to make a thickness or apply one ourselves. I'm actually going to type in three because I want it kind of thick. And I'll hit OK. And now we have our, um, our our shell, which looks pretty cool. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a, um, I'm going to smooth this out using a fillet. So I'm going to click on the fillet tool, and then I'm going to click on these two uh, edges here. And then since our thickness is 3, I'm going to make it 1.5 to make a nice, really, really nice curvy thing. And I'll do the same thing at the bottom. So holding down Command, you can add additional edges. And I'll just click on those two, and then hit OK. And now we have our sort of uh, lampshade shape. You can still modify it here. If you, if you change this out, you can still modify it and all those edits carry on through here because it's parametric. So that's really cool. Kind of want like that. Maybe more like this. And you can, of course, still go into the sketch and fine tune it even more. Let's say I want more curvature here. Just drag out those there. And now I have kind of a cool looking shape there. Maybe bring that in a little bit more. Okay. There you go. That's looking pretty cool. So at this point, you really want to modify and tweak it until you have a, a shape that you're happy with. Because at this point, we can start exporting it out and bringing it into Mesh Mixer to do some mesh mixing. So what I'll do here is I'm going to export this out now. I'm going to export this out as an STL. And if you take a look at the panels, we get a lot of options. And I usually don't mess with these. I leave it at medium. because That's sort of the default. You can always have it at high and things. But this is actually beneficial if you put it, you put it at low. So I'm going to put it at low and hit OK. This out as sh uh, shade B because I've been testing a whole bunch of different ones. So I'm going to make this B. And then open up Mesh Mixer. It's a free program from Autodesk. You can download it at uh, meshmixer.com. And I'm click on the import button. And then I'm going to navigate to the thing we just exported, shade B. And I'll hit open. And it'll bring it in there. And then here you can see that the tessellation of it is um, it's pretty uh, squarey. And if we were to, if we were to apply the mesh mixer pattern to this, it wouldn't look it wouldn't look that interesting because it's very clean and uh, symmetrical, and that's not what we want. So we actually need to deform this a little bit, and it, it can create some variation in the tessellation of it. So to do that, we can, there's a lot of sculpting tools in mesh mixer. So I'm gonna click on sculpt and go to brushes, and then click on the reduce brush br uh, brush. And then you have some properties. You have strength. I'm gonna leave that at 100, and then size. You can change the size of the brush here. So you can see it's a little smaller here, bigger at 100. And the cool thing about this um, is that we're going to actually use different sizes. The, the, the more variant you have in your size brush, the more organic the, the pattern is going to look like. So I'm actually going to start painting here. You're going to see what it does. It takes those squares and turns it more into these sort of uh, triangles, which is cool. Now, when doing this, I found that it's best not to mess with this top edge here. Leave that alone. Leave it kind of nice and curvy and, and um, symmetrical 
And the same thing with the bottom here. So leave that alone. So we're just going to paint on the outside here, barely getting close to that edge there. And this is where you get to be all creative and stuff. Um, you can, so when I increase the size of it, you'll see what happens. It, it creates bigger triangles. So that's actually pretty important to do, or at least in, in my eyes, is to, to make sort of variant. So I'm just clicking on different parts of it, and then I'll bring it back down the size, and then just start painting the rest of it like this. So you can see all that, all those triangles starting to take shape here. And this is what's good about the, um, this is what you kind of want uh, to make that Vernoy uh, pattern is this sort of variable um, shapes. <laughs> so you can get as, uh, as detailed as you want here. In this case, we're not making detail. We're just sort of creating, painting. <laughs> And again, we want to make sure to avoid uh, painting the, the top edges there. We want to keep that nice and smooth. I think it's looking pretty good. Let me make sure everything rotate around this whole thing to make sure it's pretty good. Okay, so that's not too much. And if you look on the inside, it's already painted the inside too, so we don't have to do double the work. So that's nice. Maybe a little bit more here. So I like it. It's, it looks pretty variable. So there's some big big uh, triangles here. I think it's a little bit thinner over here. Big ones over there. So that's looking pretty cool. All right, so now we have our our uh, sort of triangular looking reduced shape. <laughs> so this is where the fun comes. So now we're going to apply the pattern, uh, the Vernoy pattern across this whole thing. So to do that, it's actually under Edit. So click on Edit, and they click on Make Pattern. Uh, by default, it's got this tube looking thing, which is uh, not that interesting. It's not what we're looking for, but there are different options. So under Pattern Type, we're going to change this to Dual Edges. And watch what happens when I click on that. We get this very interesting uh, Vernoy type pattern thing. So right now it's looking like uh, it's got the hexagons and you have a couple options here. Uh, you can make it thinner or thicker. I like it at two millimeters thickness, which is pretty good. Uh, this The element spacing is something that doesn't apply to this pattern, but it would apply to maybe the tubes or something else. Um, and then there's a lot of more options on uh, refining the resolution of the mesh itself. So if you want it really, really high res, really high poly count, you can up that, but I actually like it pretty default. It seems to be pretty moderate there, and it still looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Accept. And then this is where um, it's going to calculate the mesh. It's going to make it all nice and pretty much create the, the, the mesh as good as it can. And um, the, the test that I've done so far is it makes it pretty um, watertight. It makes it nice and manifold, but if it doesn't, It'll warn you, and you can uh, do an analysis on it, which I'll show you in a second once it's done. Um, so depending on your, the, you know, the specs of your machine, maybe have a lot of RAM and nice uh, CPU. Um, that'll go faster, obviously, but it doesn't take that long. It doesn't take like a minute, at least in mine. It takes like about, I don't know, what was that, like 15 seconds or so? And here's our result. It looks pretty, pretty cool. And if you look here, you got bigger holes than this side over here because we were playing with the variable... Um, the variable uh, brush uh, brush sizes, so that really helps out making a nice organic looking shape. So if you look here, it's nice and, and smooth. Good thing we avoided uh, painting that side and, and we avoided painting this bottom here. So we got these cool, um, nice uh, bottoms and tops. But the one thing is if we wanted to print this out, it would kind of be hard because this edge isn't that flat. So we can actually flatten it out. So that's what I want to do. I'm going to click on Edit and then click on Plain Cut. And plain cut just lets you cut out uh, a piece of the model here. So I'm going to drag it down using the little arrows. And then you can uh, cut it away as much as you want. Since I have a little bit of playroom, I'm actually going to cut it right there. That looks good. Just rotate around to see everything is OK. And it's nice and flat. So that's optimized for 3D printing with no raft or any support material. So I'm going to go ahead and hit accept. The, the plain cut type and the fill type are pretty good already. So I'm going to hit accept. And there it is, it's looking good. So if you see there's like a little bit of red there, see that little red area? That means that it, there's a hole in the, in, the, in the mesh. So to clean that up, we're gonna click on Analysis and the Inspector, and it's like, hey, there's a bunch of holes actually. So okay, no, no worries. Mesh Mixer has some built-in tools to fix this already. So fill hole mode, flat hole, smooth fill. I'm gonna leave it at flat and leave all the thresholding uh, good. And I'm gonna say Auto Repair, all. So it repairs everything. And if you look at it, we can't even tell, you know, the, the hole was so small, we really couldn't tell anything, but it looks, it looks pretty good. 
and now it's watertight, so there's no errors, and it was really straightforward and easy to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit done, and hit export, and I'm gonna export this out. So I'm gonna call this shade B Vernoy, like that, and save it in the same spot. It'll export it out. No warnings, no errors, it's all good. So now we can bring it into Simplify 3D, and we can start slicing it up, or you can use your slicer, your preferred slicer. I like Simplify 3D because it's got a great tool path generator and it's got good visualizing tools for the uh, actual uh, slice. So double click on that, bring it in there. You can see it's nice and flat at the bottom, nice and curvy at the top. And then I'll go ahead and prepare the print, select my process. See, this is for the Flash Creator Pro. Uh, standard settings that I have, like the speed's pretty fast, is at 90, 150. For the speeds, I think 220 for uh, for the material. I'm just going to use regular PLA, some translucent PLA. Here's what it looks like, and it's looking pretty good. This is at a 0.2 millimeter resolution, but we could do something finer if we want. And no material, uh, no support material here. So you can see it starts off nice and flat, so it has a really nice uh, surface to stick to, and it just starts growing when you when you uh, generate it. You can see that the the infill is is pretty solid because they're they're only um, it's only two parameters thick, two millimeters thick when we when we chose that option and then it like comes and and um, combines itself at the top here. So it's pretty cool that it's two different layers here by doing that shell. If we didn't shell this out, um, it would just make one layer of the of the pattern. But I think it's pretty cool that we can shell it out and do two layers of the pattern to give it that variable looking. Um, variant. <laughs> but anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm printing this right now um, on my uh, PrinterBot Play in transparent PLA. It'll take like two hours here. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, that's just a quick look at uh, the workflow that I've kind of come up with. I've seen other people do it in Mesh Mixer, but this one is just, uh, you know, playing around with... Um, different options, different settings, painting it here and there using variable brushes. So there you have it guys, just a quick look at the workflow I came up with. If you guys have any suggestions or any ideas, let me know in the comments below. I always love reading them. Hope you guys are having a good one and I will see you next week. But until then, remember to keep on catting. Bye guys.